And we are back here at the Backwoods backstage with none other than the man himself. Yes. Him. Him. Himothy. Himothy. The, the man who made it all possible, none other than Mr. Jay Carter. How My brother. Doing? I'll clap a little bit for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Turn appreciate it up, it. man. Thank y'all for being here. It's your, it's your first time here. We've been yeah, talking about this for a minute. Yeah, time having a lounge in here. Yeah. We didn't snuck into plenty of these. Yeah, we kind of fly, here. though. Yeah. It's kind of fly, though, now, the yeah. way y'all got this thing kind of set up here. But this all our first time, including one music fest in Piedmont. Say that. In the heart of the yeah. city of yeah. ATL. Like, Absolutely. that's lit. What does that mean for you and, like, the whole entire festival to be putting it on in one of the biggest event spaces of Atlanta? Yeah, actually, I mean, it, it it is the biggest event space. I mean, if you do an outdoor multi-stage festival. I mean, you're, in, in Atlanta, your dream is to be in Piedmont Park. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it is the heart of Atlanta. Uh, I mean, it's the, it's the perfect landscape and canvas to kind of create an incredible experience, you know? So so being here is was always the vision, always the dream. So it's kind of surreal, just just kind of seeing it all come together. And, uh, and folks out there are beautiful, man. Having a good time, you know what I'm saying? Making new new friendships, new connections. I got backwards here. I got, yeah. I got 85 South here. Yes, yes. I mean, this is a uh, this this is this is black culture at its best. We were literally been saying it all weekend. Like it feel like a cookout. Like we had right. at our cousin's cookout or something. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna see. I know this is the last day for this one. But I need about 75 passes 75. for old black men to set up <laughs> grills throughout the spot. Only thing missing is the smoke. I almost I, 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 I can got see a that. gang of uncles who want to pull up out there with trucks yeah. and sell rib sandwiches and chop pork. We'll rap about that later on. I yeah, got some I see ideas. it though. I, I see the vision though. You know what I'm saying? They gotta have on the black socks and sandals. You gotta have the whole right. the whole look. Yeah. The towel I see on it. the shoulder. Come on now. Yeah, I got Now, it. this is what's been really, like, the biggest surprise to me. I know it's a lot of invited guests here, a lot of invited performers, but it's a lot of people popping up, a lot of special guests, a lot of people backstage. Man, have you seen anybody here that you was like, oh, it's my guy? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I, honestly, I only found out two days before it happened, but, you know, J. Cole coming and hopping on stage with Janet. J. Cole yeah, was that, legendary. That was, that was one of those things that just kind of came together at the last minute. But uh, but due to security, man, now we kind of know who's floating around back here. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Yeah. I love how that security is. Yeah. It looked like a Falcons game back here. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep us safe, man. You know what I'm saying? You it's not saying? even just about, like, not just the safety, just the people who in positions and they taking it real serious. It's a few ladies who won't let nobody go past That's right. where they stand. The, the, the women's bags. security out here is not playing. That's right. Uh-uh. Ain't no, they said nobody come back here. <laughs> I don't care about no wristbands or none of that. Well, you got a lot of crazy fans, man. So we got to make sure y'all I safe appreciate back here, man. That. You know I what I'm saying? I surely appreciate yeah, that So one. we got to keep y'all secure. Now, you've always held one music fest in Atlanta, but and you've been here quite some time yourself, but you aren't necessarily an Atlanta native. You're from New York. Why did you choose Atlanta as a place to start one music fest and continue to make it its home? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, I don't think... One Music Fest could have started anywhere but Atlanta. But I moved to Atlanta when I was in ninth grade. I mean, I went to Miller Grove and Reed Ann High School. So, Here you I mean, that's, that's kind of as Atlanta okay. as you're going. Yeah, that's going. So, but I mean, I think Atlanta's the perfect backdrop, man. I mean, this is this is baby Wakanda, for real. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as when you look at the black professionals, mayors, uh, uh, city council, you know, I mean, it's it's it's... I mean, it's, this, it breathes black excellence, you know what I'm saying? Could this have happened in New York? Honestly, probably not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think this, I think this, Atlanta sets the perfect stage for one music fest and also a stage to let the world realize that black culture is bigger than what media depicts on television and, and, and everything else. Atlanta just one of them cities, man. It's, like yeah. you said, the black excellence. That's right. You'll see a black man Backing up a fire truck like a Cadillac in the middle right. of the street, and you right. just busting that like, legal U-turn. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just that, beautiful, man. That's love. That's blackness. <laughs> Ultimate blackness. Yeah. 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 That so. Janet Jackson set last night was crazy. Oh, she crushed Did you it, get bro. to catch it? She crushed it, man. You know what I'm saying? I think she was also a little excited about being there, man. I mean, when you typically think about your your standard Janet Jackson audience or crowd, um, it probably don't look like that. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when's the last time you seen a Kodak Black fan club at a Janet Jackson show? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's the other thing. It's the it's the unity, man. Like how we just try to take different pockets of our culture and just bring them together in a safe space to feel celebrated. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, you know, so, people always ask you when you get when you have things like this. It's like, did you ever see it this big? Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be truthful. I I when when we wanted when we started building this thing out, I never limited it. You know what I'm saying? I never said how big it can go. I mean, I, I was inspired by Bonnaroo, by Lollapalooza, by Coachella. You know what I'm saying? The first one only had like 2,500 people. You know what I'm saying? We got 100,000 people this weekend, man. So can it be? Can it go bigger? Possibly. I'd love to see it bigger, man. So. Um, I think too many times black folks, you put limitations on how big something can be and how far it can go. I, I, I never did that with this brand, man. So I think this is a, a good showing of, of, of don't limit yourself, man. Let's keep going. It's, it's truly yeah. amazing to see what you put yeah, together. Man. And I appreciate it. I see the trickle down effect. So once Beyonce went on tour with Renaissance, they created a term called a halo effect, meaning all the businesses that reap benefits because of this event being taking place here. So it's like, it's giving opportunities to other business owners, entrepreneurs, like artists, uh, nail techs, you know, Absolutely. stylists, all these people that are employed. But even specifically, I know that you yourself like made it a point to do that with One Music Fest in general, with partnering with black brands and other businesses. So tell us about like what partnerships you made sure that you wanted to implement. No, that's another great question. But uh, I mean, we got an entire market, uh, Merchant Village out there with over 50 different black owned brands. Uh, majority of our food vendors and food trucks are black owned as well. Um, I mean, the economic impact to Atlanta is over 25 million that we just bring to the city. That's a big deal, right. you know what I'm saying? So that's hospitality, that's valet, that's hotels, that's Airbnb, that's that's parking. Cars, you see my you know boys out here hustling the parking. Yeah. Come on and now. I love, you know I, was, what I'm saying? I didn't want to interrupt, but I was yeah. like, I love that it. you literally got to come right through Fourth Ward. That's right. To get yes. over here. That's right. Yeah. You come get don't your pass way. through the hood coming we, over here. And that's yep. so beautiful as an Atlanta native. Like, I was telling Los when we were riding over, like, my mama grew up wow. on Boulevard. That's you know right. what I mean? And little yeah. girl on the project. So just to be riding through to come to a black-owned event mm. at this magnitude and to be as a creative, a black creative, doing dope work with brands that see the potential and the, and the value in us, it's, it's, it's just a real moment. It is, absolutely. You know, even even backwards being here, I mean, this was brought here by a black owned agency. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, you know, some of the other brands that we work with, we got Procter and Gamble out here, we got Coca-Cola and Sprite out here. You know what I'm saying? The executives that's out here from those companies that understand the importance of this are black. Like we've been pushing One Music Fest to brands for, for years, you know, but the problem is the people that was in those, in those offices that we were talking to don't look like us. Right. So they don't understand the value. We set the trends, you know what I'm saying? From goddamn the, 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 the TVs in, in, in your car. We was doing that. Before it was called the entertainment package. Twenties, twenties you know, stock before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you, you want the factory package or you want the sport package? Like, we started that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we set the trends, but we don't get credit for that. You know what I'm saying? So certain executives understand our importance to the culture, to, to, to economics, to the economy. So they understand the importance of, of what we're doing here uh, in black culture altogether. I think it takes other black creatives like yourself that start ideas to make sure they're intentional about incorporating us and highlighting us in the best way possible the entire way through. And I know that you also have like an HBCU background, graduating from FAMU. Yeah. So did that, going to an HBCU ever shape your mind or thought process when it came to like shit. how you went about your business? I mean, shit, changed my life going to FAMU. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I grew up. My younger years, I was in Harlem, and then coming to Atlanta, it still was a black experience. But I ain't never seen nothing like FAM at that age. I saw FAM for the first time when I was like 15. I saw the campus, beautiful black people everywhere, educated black folks, palm trees. I, yeah, it blew my mind. You know, I was meeting black folks from Portland, black folks from London, black folks from Toronto, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, Delaware. I'll, Delaware. <laughs> Folks, you don't, you know, so understanding that, you know, the different cultures and energies of, of that black experience in different cities, all culminating in one spot in Tallahassee, Florida. But you know what? It's, it, was, it was very similar to, to One Music Fest. It was a safe place to Damn win boy. and a safe yeah. place to fail and a safe place to collaborate with other black folks, you know, like-minded black folks. And, um, and that was really one of the reasons for One Music Fest as well. How do I bring us all together, you know what I'm saying, and kind of create that connectivity? And uh, I just think so much powerful stuff comes from connectivity and, uh, and, and that intersection of blackness and culture. How hard was it to miss Fam You Homecoming this year? Bruh. You got the One Music Fest the same weekend. Bruh. Yeah, I got a call from the university. They was really like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, shit. But it was the only weekend that was available for Piedmont Park to do it. So my wife went to Spelman. They homecoming this weekend. Fam used this weekend. Yeah. So, yeah, I was getting it left and right, man. But, uh, but yeah, but, but actually, this is, this is a homecoming, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, we got my kids... 11 years old running around out here. My mom's out here. Working. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> out here wilding out. You know what I'm saying? Smelling the, you know, smelling the essence. The, <laughs> the essence. Yeah, all the essence. You know, in the element. You know what I'm saying? So, it, uh, and that's what a homecoming is. It's multi-generational. It's music. It's fun. It's food. And, uh, and connectivity. Yeah. Now, who's doing the official merch for one music fest? Who's doing the official yeah, merch? Yeah, because I got this company that I want to pitch. Yeah? Yeah. I heard about them. I'm just letting yeah. you know. Yeah. I'll we connect, should figure that out. I'll connect you with my people. You got a, You got, you got. got somebody. Yeah, I got, uh, I got a well, great please, team. Well, please connect I, us. We can figure that out. connect you with Yeah, them. I heard you got some dope designers on your squad. Most definitely do. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, man, we, that's 100,000 people. That's a lot of bodies. We're missing out on some revenue. We can't be missing no revenue. Oh, he, yeah. So that's the businessman. He see the numbers. You say the numbers, he see the numbers. Yeah, he's the yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, this has been Let's amazing, though. I think that it's just so dope just to, like, really... How do you? How does your family take it all in? Like you said, they running around out here. They enjoying the party. Are they... Do your kids really realize the impact that you are having on the culture with an event like this? Or do they not really know you? Yeah, I think it's like... Uh, I think when you were a kid, I think you were in certain environments and you know it just feels special. So I know it, to them it feels special. But, um, but representation is, is, is hella important, you know what right. I'm saying? So for them to see this at a young age, you know, black businesses, um, entrepreneurs, black talent, and, and to see it, you know, in a, in, a, in a safe environment like this, you know, I think it's important for them to see and experience. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, I mean, we ain't really have, I ain't had this as a kid coming up. I was going to say, even as you know adults, like me and my homegirl, she another host, radio personality. We stopped over here yesterday, and we just stopped for a second and looked around. She was like, wow, everybody black that I can see. Like, everybody where I can see is black. This is dope. And we working, and we get money, and we having fun, and we enjoying ourselves. We safe. So it's like, even as adults, like you said, because we didn't grow up with it and see it, we're like... Man, this is amazing, and it, it really right. empowers us as people to know that we can because I think black businesses or events sometimes get such a bad rep with our customer service or if we have the logistics down all the way right the first time. But yep. what advice would you give to other creators or entrepreneurs that starting that's like, hey, maybe I don't got it all together right now, but I'm trying to figure it out because One Music Fest didn't start at Piedmont. Nah, not at all. Uh, I would say persistent to keep going. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when y'all started the podcast, like how many, how many listeners, how many streams y'all get? Like that's a real question. Ver versus like where, where y'all at now? But I think the name of the game is consistency. You know what I'm saying? And you knew the end game. I don't know if you knew that you're gonna be selling millions of dollars of merch. Stop you know what saying, saying numbers. You know what I'm, saying? I'm sorry. Not, Let me not blow here. Security. We, we, did, uh, we did all right. <laughs> but, but you know, but y'all had no idea that it's yeah, going to lead to to tours. That's going to lead to to the merch business. That's going to lead to, you know, having your own digital platform. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's consistency, man. I think it's, it's, it's you're going to hit some bumps. You know what I'm saying? Y'all done changed the office, the, the location, the studios, 
for, for whatever reason, you know, we changed location for the festival for whatever reason, you know. I mean, hell, we lost money the first five years. And if I would have stopped, you know, shit, we wouldn't be, obviously wouldn't be sitting here right now. So I think it's just consistency. A lot of times we try to talk to people that's, I don't want to say above us, but maybe more powerful and in a better position. More resources. More, more resources, but sometimes the resources are, is just looking left and right. Yeah. Right. And that's what I had to do, because initially with the idea, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I went to a big ass company with this idea because I knew I needed a lot of money to pull this thing off. And they was like, that shit ain't gonna work. I said, all right, cool. And these were folks that didn't look like us. And so I said, let me just go to the homies then. My homie over here, he's in, the, he's in the music industry. My homie over here owns a couple of venues. My homie over here has a, has a transportation business. My homie over here uh, understands lights and, and production. Well, hell, why can't we just figure this out together? We got to pull we, together. We got to pull together. My mayor, Black, let me call and get the permits from them and the license, license that I need. So I just use the resources around me. And, uh, and I said, fuck it, you know, we'll do it ourselves. Right. And that's really, that's really what it was. It's just staying consistent and sometimes looking, looking lateral instead of looking up all the time. Yeah. So what's the next step? Are we going to take this thing to the media or are we going to put one music fest on? Is it a TV show? Is it a, is it is live, it a, is it a live stream? What's the next step? That is, yeah, so definitely. So we got a few folks out here now that's kind of examining one music fest for the live stream experience. So I would say next year probably will be live stream. Um, we're gonna do a spinoff event in, uh, in the Southwest as well. Uh, and there's a lot of cameras out here. So there's, there's a documentary being, being discussed and put together now as well, yeah. Would you be interested in doing like a One Music Fest, like an old school type? An old school joint. Like yeah. an oldies. Music we just had El Debarge. We had we El Debarge. Just have, I was jamming with El Debarge. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The whole joint. But she like just classic. nothing but like Osley Brothers. You said just just us. Classics. Patty. Classics. Yeah. When you say classic, give, give, give me an example of the classics. That clean up. That Saturday morning clean up. Music. Like I'm telling you, the people. Yeah. Like you got give the me, Jill Scotts. You got Patty Labelle's. You yeah. got Diana Ross. You got El Debarge. You got Osley Brothers. Like just. You know, I think so. I do think Anita that Baker. I think that exists to a, to a point. I think that already exists, but but I love the idea of Not having the Jay Carter version. Though. But this is the Jay Carter version, right? So it is Janet so he, Jackson. He, he, I get what you're saying. You, you know what I'm saying? I think that's the I think that's the power of it, man. Yeah. Like when you go to like a, a festival like in No Shade. To to Rolling Loud, you know what I'm saying? You and know, ain't nobody even Rolling Loud. Right. <laughs> Oh, they rolling loud on that motherfucker. <laughs> they roll, but it's it's young, right? Right. Like if I was to go there, I'd probably be like, man, get me the fuck out of this mosh pit. You know what I'm saying? But I think I think when you have, you know, uh, an experience where you got a Semino fan base, a Megan fan base that also can pull up and enjoy somebody like an Elder Barge, somebody like a Janet Jackson, somebody like a uh, a Big Daddy Kane on the other stage. Like, it almost should feel like a a, a, a a Roman museum of black culture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, open these young minds up to like, yeah, that, that, that sample you heard on that, on that track that you love, that, 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 that Travis track. Yeah, that, that was El Debar's young, young cat. Yeah. That was, that, that, that came from Brand Nubian who just, Performing on that stage, so I yeah, think I saw brand new being out here. So yeah, Pooh was just walking around chilling. Sadat X yeah. came over here. Oh, he came, okay, y'all yeah. grabbed him. Lord Jamal, everybody yeah. came through. On his on his couch? Yeah, they came through. And came I love that shit. Merch. That was, that was that's awesome. That's all. That's what it's supposed to be, man. Were you intentional about that from the start of it though? Like I wanted to be all inclusive of hip hop. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the tagline from day one was unity through music, and. uh I just, I think there's so much more power that we gain from, from collaborative efforts. You know what I'm saying? So if I only move in certain spaces, then I'm only gonna get what I'm gonna get from that group. You know what I'm saying? But if I, but now if I put y'all in a space with, y'all got Procter & Gamble standing over here. Procter & Gamble is the biggest advertiser, not in America, in the world. 
in the world. Like they, they dwarf everybody in marketing dollars by billions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, would you be in that space at, at a Rolling Loud? I, probably not. Probably you know what I'm not. Saying? You but need it's to the tell them to come over here and holler and at sit me. on the couch right, and, and, and the couch. bring me a, about six hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I got some stuff I need right. advertising. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think it's being. I think getting out of what we're used to and being in different spaces is... is yeah, but like you powerful. said, we need the spaces to be able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what it, No, it is Absolutely. that for sure. And I think you don't even realize how you do need it because as a creative, myself and other um, musician, young musician, Money Long, we were over there watching Janet last night. Yeah, she And we were like, channel. this is so amazing that we get to learn from... Another, and I'm, she's telling me how she's learning as an artist yeah. right now watching her. And I'm telling her, like, even as a creative... I'm learning from her performance and how she yeah. engaged in it, other little things. So, like you said, just bridging that gap, even as on the creative side, like to bring old school and new school, or just you know what I mean, wrapping it all together. That's really dope. I like how intentional you were throughout the entire process. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, man, and after seeing how you rock and how you put stuff together, I I hate that it's only one time. That, that we get to come here and kick Yeah, like so do I, man. So do I. This need to be quarterly, yeah. man. It's a large undertaking, man. So it's, it's 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 hell just to put this one together. So I know. But we got another one coming. So we're gonna be one in the in the spring, and then we're gonna have this in the fall. Okay. okay. Yeah. The double up. Yeah. Well, what you want to leave us with before we? Because we can literally talk all day. All day long. And pick man. your brain, yeah. man. So when y'all so gonna turn off the mics and just have fun, man? We do that in between guests. We working right now. Yeah. Yeah, this is for the culture. We are Understood. documenting. Okay. And then and it's not like we're sitting over here and re like we're not doing something important. This has to be done. Understood. Somebody has to be here, especially with the way that media is going. Somebody gotta be here grabbing people, getting some tidbits, getting some drops and, and you know, documenting this. They I might agree. look at this footage. 50 years from now. That's right. Be like, man, Jake Carter was cool as hell. You see yeah. what he said on that? <laughs> yeah. And well, it's I not often it. that you get to have these type of talks with the people in charge. Who behind got, the scenes. Mm, behind the scenes. Happen, we can pull yeah. up. Yeah, man. So we making history, too. Yes, we are. And, and you all are very important to the culture and history as well, man. And to media. Yeah. And to media. We need, we need these voices and these channels. Absolutely. Most yeah. definitely. Thank y'all. Well, we most Thank definitely appreciate you appreciate pulling that. up to Lose, the back, you, Backwoods dog. Lounge backstage. Yep. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And we out of here, man. Yeah. 85 South Show, Bree Renee, Jay Carter, Backwoods Backstage. We out.